What's up guys, my name is Satya Sierra and welcome to another episode of Seba Reviews. And today we're reviewing the latest movie of one of the most prolific directors right now in modern cinema. They are the hit making duo, of course, I am talking about Joe and Anthony Russo's latest film with their boy Spider-Man, Cherry. I mean, these dudes are living the life right now. They've done one of those biggest films in history. They've done for quite a while, at least right now, it was on top, and now fucking Avatar came out of nowhere like, bitch, you thought! Of course, they've done the Avengers films, they've done the Captain America movies, I mean, at least two of the trilogies. They have done one of the biggest superhero movies, and again, the biggest movie of all time, at least for almost a year. They are people that everybody wants to work with right now. Like, hey, Joe and Anthony Russo, what, what do you want to do? Fuck yeah, we'll give you the money, you do whatever you want, we trust you. And I personally, I really like them. I love what they've done. I don't think I love them as directors, but I really love their work, especially with Captain America. I think Captain America Winter Soldier, which is their first entry into the MCU, I think it is still today my favorite MCU film of all time. Love that movie. Like, Jesus. I mean, I can go I can go deep in that movie later on in another like, a review or anything related to MCU stuff, but... I love that movie. And of course, they've done Civil War, which is another hit. Is, I mean, holy shit, but whatever they did with that movie, fantastic. And of course, they did Infinity War and Endgame, which I love Endgame a lot. I mean, Infinity War is like, eh, but Endgame, shit. So it's like, they are in their peak right now. And since Endgame, they've, you know, worked here and there, but they've only basically done producer work. Or Joe's, Joe Roots is really the one that's doing a lot of work. Like he's written some movies. He wrote uh, Extraction, the movie with uh, Chris Hemsworth you can see on Netflix. I think he's also produced stuff here and there, but they, they, they haven't directed anything since that movie. So I'm just kind of waiting like, okay, producing job, that, that's fine. And writing, that, that's cool. But I want to see what they do next as directors, especially outside the MCU. Well, maybe they come back to the MCU, who knows? But we have that answer with this movie, which again, they reunited with <laughs> the person they chose to be our Spider-Man right now, Tom Holland. In this movie based on Nico Walker, a real life story of this guy who came back from the army and he became a drug addict. But the thing is, you wouldn't know that this really is a movie of this person, Nico Walker, because they never mention his name in the movie even once. It's like this character, I mean, he is a person, but he's almost doesn't feel real in ways he's like a passing device but he's not like a person it's weird dude it's it's odd especially in the movies we don't really know about his personal life aside from what we see from the get-go in the movie through the last of it we don't know really that much about him or even like his background his family nothing maybe this is in the book because this is based on the book that he wrote but it's, it's weird i just thought about it as i went along I'm like well okay i know what's going on currently but we don't really know about this guy's life at all so that was odd that was, that was just weird but that's just something i have to say right now that's, that was just weird but yeah i was kind of eager to see this movie i wasn't that excited and especially now with the critics reviews that were I don't know if they were necessarily bashing the movie, but they were not liking the movie all that much and kind of just giving it a hard time. But I wanted to check out the movie myself and see like, okay, what are people talking about? I didn't read the reviews. I just wanted to give my own opinion on this and see what I think personally. I only saw one review and yeah, that's not a positive review, but let's give it a fair shake see what happens with this movie i want to see what can they do outside of the marvel movie. i know that before then they did the like, community the show that, uh, that was on nbc i haven't seen that show really I'll, I'll get to it at one point but i have not seen a film from them that was directed by them and i think they also wrote the movie outside of the marvel movies so i want to know what can they do and it's also another chance to see tom holland doing something a little bit fresher than his take on spider-man of course he's done other things before then he's i think he's done some things in between but you know we know him a lot more right now as spider-man so seeing something different and oh yeah it's very different than spider-man then that's cool so i would say once i get into the movie i'm i'm just getting right into the movie i'm getting sucked in by what's going on the way the movie's narrated how we've seen the story develop i can tell the russos love to do visual storytelling they love how to work with different techniques different camera setups different aspect ratios and they do a lot of stuff even the coloring a lot of stuff to just 
get you sucked in and kind of entertain you a little bit and, and but also make this a beautiful story even though it is pretty dark and kind of tragic but they kind of just still kind of want to keep things in a good pace and keep them going along and also kind of enjoy it a little bit like i really enjoyed the first half of the movie seeing uh, uh nico's story seeing what's going on seeing him falling in love with this girl and see how that develops and blooms into a relationship you know we see what is going through his life and really the first half is just seeing what's going on in his life and what leads him to go to the army and all that it's just it's good it's just it's a good film about his life and her life and that relationship and it was it was nice like I will say that his girlfriend Emily, who's played by uh, Clara Bravo, I she was good at least in the first act. She was good, but her character was just getting on my nerves. And you know, this is real stuff. I mean, people are really like that. And I'm not saying like I hate her for what she's doing, because you know, this there's real things, real situations, real issues. And I can't judge her for what she does, but it's, you know, it's just things that I'm like, oh my god, it would irritate. A lot of people so she was kind of getting on my nerves and what was going on but other than that i was really enjoying the first act of the movie because i really love the different visual flares the way that just as you can tell what they're trying to convey in this movie because i mean there's some scenes where you when you see nico and emily meeting to each other you see that only that she and him are on focus while the rest of it is out of focus so it just tells you that in his mind this is what he's only focused on he's focused on her because he is in love with her so i thought okay that's clever and again i love the way that nico at least in this movie narrates the film it's kind of interesting and it's also divided in part it's almost like a book i, I really i liked it i liked how the movie is structured and narrated so far as i went along also the movie does a lot of uh, breaking the fourth wall with nico so that's cool and the way they do it the moments that they do it it's fun and like Oh, that's awesome that's that's cool the way you do it is cuffed off very nice it's just super cool and there's also characters in the way like his friend uh james who's played by forrest good luck i mean he was one of the shiniest parts of the movie he's not in it that much but the moments that he does show up he breaks the tension a little bit although his own life is a mess and it's pretty tragic as well but the times that he shows up just being this kind of like dopey goofball Huh, get it? Dopey? Which is cool, because, you know, he, he broke the tension in an otherwise very serious and pretty uncomfortable movie. But it's by the second act of the movie that uh, that's when things started to slowly kind of fall apart for me. Because the things we've seen in his life in the military days, I mean, stuff is still good. I mean, even back before, you know, he's actually deployed, seeing stuff before then, it was right dude i'm like, like the way they, i love the visual decision of just putting his aspect ratio in like a square it still look good like visually like crisp and clean i'm like oh my but I still have like a little bit of grainy love the way it looked and i i love everything they did with that stuff i'm like shit this is awesome although damien wins jr is in this movie as a drill sergeant and he tries but he just he does not convince me that well as a hardcore drill sergeant like it, no way but it's when he's deployed and there's some interesting stuff and some stuff that is very crucial to his story but it just drags out a little bit and it just becomes almost like a different movie and i'm like okay i mean i get why we're here but a lot of moments like just it's just over stuff and we just don't need that we don't need this like oh look, now we're in the war movie basically like i don't need that right now so that shit takes like a quick halt and like okay we're here now and we're just stuck in this moment for the rest of the movie i'm like oh shit okay i mean i was kind of enjoying it but once i was thinking about it i'm like this is not really what i want to see right now but also once we get to the parts where okay nico becomes a drug addict he's doing a lot of heroin he's doing a lot of pot smoking it's that i understand what the Russo Bros tried to do here by trying to show how difficult and brutal and hard the life of an addict is. I don't know if other films have tackled this. is not like this is a new thing. And I get they want to show like the raw bones of them just like dying to get some drugs and just injecting some needles into them. But sometimes it's just way too much. They repeat it way too often. They keep going and harking on it, harking on it. I'm like, okay, I get it. We don't need to, do we need to see all these moments happening and happening again and over and over i guess again so just show you how brutal of a life cycle that is 
And again, I don't know if this, this is really in the book, which I also heard that Nico Walker disagrees with some stuff that happens in the movie. It's like, yeah, that some of the shit did not happen. But it just felt like, oh my God, this is way, just going way too much. It's like, oh, I, I get it. I get it. And some of the stuff is, I mean, I guess kudos to them for making me feel uncomfortable because sometimes you see like needles hanging from the arm and they're drugged and doing some, ah, some, that's yeah, some sick shit. I'm like, oh my god. The kudos for making me believe that stuff and also for Tom Holland and uh, Clara Bravo's performance because they, they sell when this shit get high. Especially Tom Holland. I'm like, holy shit. I just thought that was way too much and it kind of dragged out the movie even more and I'm like, I, I can't, I don't, we don't need all this. We don't need all this. Like, okay, we, I kind of know where the movie's gonna go but getting there it just takes a while. Like, oh my god. And even when we get to the point where we're supposed to see the movie, it's just, Harking back again, like drugs, drugs. Like I get it, get it. Also, like the message of the movie telling you, basically telling you, like, yeah, the military sucks. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't go in the military. Like, hey, I respect the people that want to go to the military and actually do it for good intentions. Like, okay, cool, my respect to you, but yeah, I'm not. I don't support the military. I'm sorry. I'm glad the movie's also kind of on my side. So. Hey. I also love how this movie has like a surreal take to it, you know, how, how we see some locations literally having a name like, oh, fucking bank, you know, like, oh, okay. Or like a person's name is like, oh, doctor, whatever, I'm like, okay. That, 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 I like those little surreal choices, like, okay, we kind of were in this mind of a Nico Walker and seeing like, I guess maybe some details are blurry to him or he just not all there. And also, yes, <laughs> I did see the shot, you know, people were talking about this, oh, the butthole scene, you know, because there's an actual camera like inside an anus. We're seeing the perspective of the asshole. <laughs> and it just, it, it was in and out, literally. It, but it was quick, it wasn't anything like, it called so much attention to itself, but yeah, you know them like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's a choice that's also kind of kind of like this movie it's, it's, again they do a lot of interesting visual choices and camera movements and story narrative devices that are just good and it kept me up for that first act and then by the second act and by the third act it's just, just kind of dragged out and all that creativity all those moving parts and creative juices going it's just kind of falter there i'm like i get by the third act, i know what's going on because it's not supposed to be fun you know there are some little moments that like break the tension but it just takes like a slow slow turn I'm like okay shit and over stuff the things that i don't really need here and also say that jack rayner's in this movie and he's good he's not like the greatest character he's not like amazing in the movie but he's really good just playing like this drug dealer asshole rich kid you know i i really like what he did in this movie i think jack rayner's a great actor and I really enjoyed seeing him in the movie sometimes. I'm like, okay, it's cool. He does have some funny stuff in here as well. And the movie really is about Tom Holland, Nico Walker, and Emily uh, Clara Bravo. They're both good together. I really enjoy the relationship. I can tell that like, man, these are young, young people doing very adult life decisions and situations. Like at some point they're like 23, I'm currently 24. So I'm like, wow. Like, what if I was in this situation right now? Like I kind of assimilated myself like, or I just looked myself into their lives. I'm like, what if this was me? <laughs> so I like that aspect and the relationship, yeah, it's not the best relationship, you know, not saying written wise, but you know, as a relationship, I'm like, God damn, this is really messy. It's, it's really bad, but I guess I can tell like they love each other. And I don't know, maybe it's healthy at, at some point, maybe in their lives, but yeah, through the journey of the movie, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's bad. There's it's a lot of bad stuff. But yeah, Tom Holland is fantastic in this movie. He is great from being just sober and kind of normal to just being completely doped out and it's just going crazy and doing drastic, desperate measures to take whatever he wants. I mean, wow, he is great. Even sometimes where he's just having some vicious reactions to some stuff. Like, Holy crap, dude, this guy from Breaking Down, just being sober, just being kind of funny, he goes to different emotional levels in this movie and he is great, fantastic. 
And Colin Brown as well, she's really good. She goes also to different levels, you know, from being kind of normal, but also kind of going to angry levels, to going to also some desperate levels, to do some stuff. I'm like, oh my god, why are these people doing these things? But they're really good at each other, and I kind of bought their relationship a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I can see this. It's not a healthy relationship, but yeah, I can see the chemistry. I think the writing was good. The direction, again, was incredible, at least for the first act of the movie. But yeah, it just dragged out pretty over stuff but i don't think i if critics hate the movie i, I don't i don't i'm not in that bandwagon i don't really hate this movie at all i think it's not a great movie there's a lot of great stuff in here but it's not a bad movie or it's not terrible by any means although there's some good stuff i also can't say it's a good movie it's somewhere in the middle kind of teetering to a little bit bad but it's either or. So I gotta give Cherry a 6 out of 10. It was right there in the middle level. It's just like, I don't think it's a movie I'll watch again. It's like sort of some scenes I'll probably watch on YouTube. I'm like, man, this shit looks amazing. But other than that, I don't think I would ever watch this movie unless I haven't seen this movie. You wanna watch it with me? Okay, sure, why not? I wouldn't regret watching it again, but yeah, there's some stuff I'm like, okay, I gotta see these moments again. Fuck, this is brutal. <laughs> So what do you think of Cherry? Did you like the movie? Did you not like the movie? Did you like Tom Holland's performance? Did you like Carver Brown's performance? Did you not like them? Who did you not like the movie? What did you like? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about the movie and let's discuss it. Like this review, please give it a like, share, and subscribe for more reviews or other types of content because it's very, whatever you want to watch, it's already here. Oh, I will do it already in this channel. So my name is Sebastian Sierra and you're watching Hablando Shit.